I don't want to encourage no younger artists or anybody upcoming who wants to do music. I'm not saying independence may not be for you because at the same time, music takes money. And sometimes a label situation may be the best for you. It just wasn't the best for me anymore because it's something I tried. You know what I'm saying? And with me being in the game 10 years, like, I kind of saw it all. And now I know what's best for me, man. The creative control, you know what I'm saying? And, like, and I still have a partner. You know, I still have a partner, man. But now, man, I'm, I'm really boss CEO, and I'm, I'm loving it. All right, today we got the one and only rich homie Quan with us. Man, before we get started with any of this stuff, let's just do a quick check, man. How are you? How are you living? How are things right now? Oh, man, I'm good, man. Uh, mentally uh, better than ever. Um, I'm just in a good space right now, man. I, I love the space I'm in. Uh, probably better than ever, man. I'm, I'm good, yeah. man. How about you, man? How, how, how are you? You know what I'm saying? Mentally, you know what I'm saying? You know, spiritually, how, how you feeling? Yeah, I mean, I'm good. I mean, things have been good getting ready for the holidays and everything right now. But I feel like it's kind of been a tough week. I'm not going to lie. Thinking about like takeoff and just thinking oh, about man. artists passing so young. I mean, I mean, I know that this isn't anything new necessarily, but it just feels like it's been so much recently. So I've been thinking yeah. a lot about that. That part, you know, like I've been trying to get it out my my mind, man, because like, me and Takeoff wasn't close, but I have worked with him, you know what I'm saying, on numerous occasions, on numerous occasions. And with him being from Atlanta, man, it just hit, that one hit a whole lot different, man. That one touched me, man. That one really, that hurt me, man. That, that hurt a lot of us, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think Sauce Walker said the best, man. Like, hip hop took a big L, man. That, that was a humongous L, man. Humongous. Yeah, and I mean, there was so many of you that came up right around the same time. I feel yeah. like you came out and then they had the moment. Like there were so many of y'all from Atlanta that rose up. Yes. Yeah. So that's why I was like, I, I kind of felt the different. Like I saw, I saw before um, they were with QC, all of us sitting on Gucci couch before we, before we got our first million, when we're still, we're grinding in grind mode. So like just to see that and know like, Man, that could have been me. That could have been any of us. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that that one definitely like hit me hard, oh, man, real hard. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And I mean, you were just talking about it. You going back to being on QC's couch. I was just yeah. looking back at the double XL cover, the freshman class with you on the cover, and man, it was such a moment. I mean, when you think back to that moment when everything was rising up, like, what do you think on the most? What memories stick out to you the most about that time? Uh, what memories stick out about the most? Um, I would just say more so recording and the music being so free. Because at that time, we didn't have all those eyes on us. So then, you know, like, uh, we could say whatever. And, when, and, and no one, you know, we, we can say how we really felt. You know what I'm saying? Because you was in that grind. And it's just, you know, once you get to a certain level, it's certain things you can't say no more. Because, you know what I'm saying, you got certain people looking at you and they're dissecting your words every every type of way. So I would just say, man, just the recording process, man, then, man, the way we record, the way it'll be all five of us in the booth at one time, or maybe you should say it this way or this way, and it was just a, you know, just a vibe, man, and a learning experience, man, because we were so young at that time, like, we didn't know we'll be here 10 years later, you feel me? So yeah. I, that's the beauty of it all. And I mean, for you, 10 years later, you've done a few interviews recently, you talked about you talk about why you want to be independent and what this next chapter looks like for you what has been the big thing that's made you want to have this next chapter be independent be on your own terms as opposed to how the last decade was up to this point um i would say the most important part about being independent and what i wanted it about it what i wanted uh from it more so it was just the fact that i had tried everything else i had tried being with a label um, I tried the TIGs and, uh, you know, the other independent labels, and I just thought it was my turn. I had saw every side of the sword, but just this side of the sword, and it's just been so much more fun. Just and I, When I say fun, it's more so from a business side, and I say that because at first I was such an artist mode, 
it was hard for me to be a CEO, but to continue to say I'm a CEO when I'm not doing none of the CEO shit. And I say that to say, like, I'm not in tune with the conversations. Uh, I'm not on every phone call. I'm not CC'd in those emails and those important emails. So now, man, with me being a CEO, I'm more in tune. You know what I'm saying? I'm knowing, I'm knowing what the budget is for this. Uh, just understanding the budget. Okay. So, yeah, you talked about seeing the money and just being able to see what the costs are looking like, what the money's coming in. What was the biggest surprise there? Because I know you didn't see a lot of that as the artist, but now that you're being CC'd on those emails, now that you're seeing those things, did anything stick out to you? Um, what stuck out the most to me, the most to me uh, it was just more so of money I would see go out uh, for videos and stuff like that, and I would have no knowledge or my input when it's my money that's paying for these videos. So that made me just put my, you know, like, damn, I would have rather shot the video with so-and-so and so, and maybe, you know, it could have been better for a cheaper number than the number of uh, someone who's big, big. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it just started making me, like, way more in tune, man. Just way more in tune. And, like, how can I call my C myself a CEO if, I'm, if I don't have those last say-sos on, you know what I'm saying, who, who, who I think should shoot the video, you know? So it's like, yeah, I just want to stay in tune, man, and stay at it. Stay at yeah. it all the way around the board, man. Like, I'm getting older now, and I still got people I look up to, and I'm looking at some of the transitions they had to make. You know, sometimes you got to realize everybody can't go with you. Right. And that's right. part of being a CEO. And I feel like you're talking a lot about something I've heard you talk about in other interviews, too, creative control, being able to yeah. have more say-so over the process. And I was surprised it stuck out. Like, a song like Flex, which was a hit that people liked, like, you really weren't feeling that song as much. At I mean, all. I know, at yeah. all. At all. Like, one of my, like, because I felt like at the time Flex came out, I was such, I was more so of a, uh, I don't want to just say a street rapper, but those were my fans. My fans were like the people who came up from similar situations to me. And I just didn't want my fans to ever think like I was crossing over or making crossover music. And because that was one of them songs, like it wasn't a, I was known for making pain music, you know what I'm saying? So to say, and, uh, that was one of, one of those feel good, different records, but it made, it was, it was a gift and a curse to me because it made me realize like, it's not what I like, it's what the people want, and it's all about the fans. And that was my biggest song, like, solo to this date. So it's just it, it just made me realize, like, Corn, you just, just focus on making the music and let the people decide for you, which is which, man. You know what I'm saying? But it turned into a good situation, man. To this day, I still perform. I, I still perform flex, man. You know, so I'm still getting paid off it. So, you know, that's, the, that's one of the, the perks, man. You know what I'm saying? Trust your team. Definitely right. trust, you, trust your teams and the ones that love you, to, who love you, that you keep around. Yeah, and I feel like that's a balance I hear from even the folks that have been doing this in entertainment for years. I feel like Denzel was someone who had said he's making all these Equalizer movies, right? But he's like, those movies pay the bills so that I can do these August Wilson plays and all of these things that really mean something to him. So I feel like Flex might be that for you. That gives you the ability to do the stuff you really want to put out there. Yeah, and, and, and that's what it was. Like, I was kind of afraid of my creativity on that song. You know what I'm saying? If that make any sense, like... I don't know, because I make a lot of music, man, and it's a lot of songs that's probably similar, that's like that, that will never come out only because of my mind. But that's why lately I've been letting the team, I create, let the team decide, you know, pick which ones they feel like that needs to be heard. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I've grown that as, as an artist slash CEO. You know what I'm saying? Getting out of the artist mode and going step back. I trust these guys enough, but you know what I'm saying? Not, they're not going to make me look bad, let alone make themselves look bad because they're a part of this. This represents them as well. Definitely, definitely. And if we fast forward a few years, here you are now, you have RHQ Entertainment, you recently have the joint venture launch with Venice, shout out to Troy and Susie, the folks over there. Talk yeah. to me about this. What's the vision for that joint venture? Where are things going? Oh man, where are things going? I think uh, the world is starting to see, and it, we haven't even got started yet. That's the crazy part. Like We haven't even got started yet. But like, you know, it was one of those situations where the distribution was nothing I hadn't had yet. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, it's all about me. Like I always start new things and never want to try 
less than twice. You know what I'm saying? Like, I still don't know, like, what my future holds, but I just know, like, man, Venice has just been, like, such a tremendous help to the RSU brand. And for what I got going on, it just fit perfectly. And it wasn't one of those, oh, we just jumped straight into it. Like, I think, like, uh, big shout out to Red, man, because Red, like, he did not give up, man. And it might have took us six months to get everything just done the right way where everybody's comfortable. And most importantly, everybody wins, man. You know what I'm saying? Big shout out to Troy. I was just with him last night. He flew down here, man. It, it, it was tremendous. Every time, man, I'm, I'm big on energy. And energy last night created a crazy vibe, man. You know what I'm saying? So big shots out to Venice, man. Susie, everybody, the whole team, Alyssa. I don't want to leave nobody out, but, man. Uh, I love it, bro. I love it, man. And it was the best situation for me. And like I always like to say, I don't want to encourage no younger artists or anybody upcoming who wants to do music. I'm not saying independence may not be for you because at the same time, music takes money. And sometimes a label situation may be the best for you. It just wasn't the best for me anymore because it's something I tried. You know what I'm saying? And with me being in the game 10 years, like, I kind of saw it all, and now I know what's best for me, man. The creative control, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and like, and I still have a partner, you know. I still have a partner, man. But now, man, I'm I'm really boss CEO, and I'm I'm loving it. So now that you do have a partner, but like you said, they're not a record label. It's more on the distribution side. What are the things that they are going to be doing for you, and like, what does that partnership look like in terms of your role and in terms of Venice's uh -huh. role? Okay. We had a partnership, man. It's more so of a, uh, like a lot of things I didn't know, like on the technology side of things and stuff that they're showing me, man. You know what I'm saying? Even with more more opportunities outside of music. You know what I'm saying? I think that's the biggest thing now, man. You know, opportunities outside of music. You know what I'm saying? Uh, movie ventures and stuff like that that I had no idea that I thought I could tap into, but... You know what I'm saying? It's showing me, man. It's beautiful, man. It's beautiful, man. I feel top priority, bro. It feels better, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've been in label situations. The team we got over there, they're working hard. 80% of these labels I saw and I've worked with. So that that's what I love, and that's what it's been that being able to show me, man, that, like, they ain't playing. They yeah. ain't, they ain't yeah. playing. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Because, cause, I mean, Troy gets it, and I know just seeing the way that they've structured things, a lot of it is thinking about how to think beyond streaming, too, right? Like, what yeah. does Web3 look like? What do NFTs look like? Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. And stuff that I had no knowledge of. Of course, I hear it, but now I have a person who can show it. And that's what I told him last night. Like, man, it's different when you hear everybody that's talking. But you, you've shown and proved everything you said, man. So, and, and that's a big up. And with, with me being able to have a direct line to him, to be able to talk to him, you know, like, I, I got direct connect to him, man. I've been in his house, sat in his living room, man. I ate, I, I ate dinner over there. So, like, that's the part I love, man. Like, he hands on, like, you feel me? Like, that's big bro. You see what I'm saying? That's big bro, man. So, like, I love it, man. I love it, bro. Big shout out to Venice, man. No, dope. No, that's for sure, man. So yeah, it's been good to hear you just talk about the ownership and just what it means to be a CEO. And I know it's two different hats you got to wear. Do you feel like Quan the CEO is any different from Quan the artist? Um, I would definitely say Quan the CEO is a whole lot different from the uh, from the artist. And that's only because as an artist, I be in my mind a lot. You know what I'm saying? I be in my mind a whole lot. But as a CEO, I get it where... You got to get out your mind. It ain't, it ain't about your mind or your feelings, man. It's business. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's business. And, and that's why I have to separate the two. They're, they're totally different. And corn is only corn as an artist with the microphone. Well, that, when I'm not the microphone, it's about the family and it's about the business. You know what I'm saying? In that order. In that order. And God, of course, first. With, with him being first. You know what I'm saying? I'm back corn up, you know, the sun. Yeah. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, and thinking back just about your career, I feel like we're just talking at the beginning of the conversation, right? Whether it's you, Migos, Rocco, a few of you that came up in this same time frame. But I feel like you all were a little bit early then when streaming really took off. And I often wonder, like, man, like, they obviously all had successful careers, but would things look any different? And maybe it was like two, three years later when you saw how streaming was. Streaming really 
like, copied what y'all were doing in I the remember, business model. And all yeah, that. I remember that. Like when the first, like my biggest records, like those were so hard copies. You know what I'm saying? Just digital. Like it wasn't no streaming. It was just like, but I, a lot of my packs, pack, pack say, you know what I'm saying? Me and your record sold, like, no, like, you know, physically. So it's different. Like, there was still CD players then and stuff, you know what I'm saying? So it was, a, when they first started talking streaming, I was like, I don't think I can get paid all that now, nah, man. Put me, I want to sell mine. And just now, I feel like you said, I really feel like they, they, they got something from the numbers we were doing and, and turned it into a, Digitally all the way. So I, I love it, man. And that's why this, this run here is more important because I'm going to get me some of that new money. I promise you that. Oh, yeah. A whole yeah, lot. The thing, yeah, the thing I feel like that you all did a lot was just dropping in the frequency of when the mixtapes came out, right? Yeah. It was like you didn't let up. Like all And now, and now mixtapes are albums. There are no more mixtapes. You know what I'm saying? Like I think I saw something from me where he's going to bring mixtapes back. And that's like even now. Mixtapes are album, and then there were still mixtapes. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. But yeah, it's okay. I got something yeah. for you. <laughs> I know, man. I know. So, yeah. So, you had the recent release that came out. It was an EP. Yeah. For you, though, how do you distinguish or make a distinction between EP versus albums versus mixtapes now, just given that everyone is putting out music and however they want to label it, uh, maybe different? Yeah. yeah. Uh, to me, I differentiate them only because, man, like, yeah, so what I just put out, the little EP, man, or mixtape, I feel like EP and mixtape, same thing. Um, mixtape, I'm doing, I'm, I'm, uh, I would say I'm rushing the music. Uh, album, I'm going to take a little more time. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a little more thought out. It's going to be because I still look up to my favorite albums coming from your fabulous, coming from your T.I.'s first album. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at the structure of those, and the structure of those can't be within a month, two month process. That process may take a year. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, I, I need the content to rap about. So th that's the only way I differentiate towards the time I put in a man. You know what I'm saying? Time. Yeah, that makes sense. And I feel like for the most part, you can hear that from a lot of artists. Once in a while, you'll hear a mixtape that people feel like is just as good as an album. But for the most part. The more effort that you hear, you hear the production quality. You hear it in the bars, yeah, and you, you hear, yeah. and, and they last longer. You know, they last longer. That's why I feel like a lot of the music is here. You know, today and gone in in two weeks. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because it, it, it's similar, so much similarities, and that's why, man, I've been trying to stay creative with the process, stay corn, don't change my style, but I can't evolve in my sound. And when right. I say that, I mean it's like you know, I don't see the same stuff I used to see. Now I'm rapping about the things I'm seeing now because I'm old. I'm trying to put my peers and the uh the younger generation on real estate, man. Let's buy less jewelry. Let's be, you know what I'm saying, a little less flashy and get the things that really matter. You know what I mean? If we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna screen the block, let's go buy a couple of properties on the block. So now now we have a reason to rip the block. You know what I'm saying? Stuff of that nature, man. You know what I mean? Just you know, respecting my position and damn, you know, and playing it. Yeah. You've been getting more into real estate? Oh man, a whole lot. Whole lot. Uh, and I think last year, you know what I'm saying, I made one a million plus on real estate. You know what I'm saying? I said, and not a music check involved. You feel me? Just last year. So I've definitely been getting into a whole lot more, man. Nice. A whole lot more. Yes, sir. Was that off for rental properties or a sale uh, of a property? Or? Uh, rental, a couple of flips, and me selling my first home. Nice. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's like, yeah, I did a million plus in real estate, no rap, no rap cap. <laughs> and is this mostly in Georgia or is it only in, you uh, no, only in Georgia? You know, like I'm born and raised here and now I'm getting on a, uh, now I'm, have, I'm getting to the level I'm going out, you know, in different states and, you know what I'm saying, going to buy, you know, smaller, smaller stuff and just uh, revamping them, doing them, reselling them, I'm doing a quick flipping and stuff like that, man. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. Are there any other businesses that you've been getting involved with outside of music? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, also with the uh, the eighteen wheelers. Got a couple of eighteen wheelers. You know what I'm saying? We got box trucks. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a couple of uh, a couple of car lots and stuff like that. Car mechanics, some stuff like that. It's every type of way to keep it keep it rolling, man. Keep it moving, man. You know what I'm saying? The pandemic opened my eyes up a whole lot. 
And I really had to take advantage of that time opposed to just sitting in the house making babies. You feel me? <laughs> I hear you on that, man. I hear you on that. What was it like for you during the pandemic? Obviously, you couldn't tour. I know that gave you an opportunity to explore these other ventures. But what was it like for you? Uh, the pandemic, uh, what was it like for me? Uh, I would say that's definitely the moment I caught my groove back in the music opposed to when I had took that long break. You know what I'm saying? Uh, being here, because I had just moved at that time. I had just moved and got me another house. I had bought my, uh, the house which I'm in now. And when I moved, I didn't set the studio equipment up for like close to a year. We just, I'm just, I'm sitting around like, come on, man. I think, uh, I think the Migos might've had a just drop song. I'm like, damn, my boys just dropped. But I'm hitting like in a competitive mode. Like, damn, boy, I, I can go drop me one too. And I was just like, man, get up off your ass and go drop it. Go get up off your ass and go do something. And since that day, man, I haven't started recording. I, bu I built a studio back at the house, a new one, a dope one. That's what I'm at now. I'm getting here, getting it done. Uh, and it's just like my whole mindset changed. Like, nah, man, we ain't giving up. We ain't quitting right now. Nah, man, I'm from Atlanta. Nah, we don't, we don't throw in no white flags. You feel me? Let's go hard. Yeah. And I think um, it started with that. Then from uh, dropping some music uh, and linking with Venice and them uh, trusting my plan and wanting to have my back, you know? Yeah, for sure. What has it been like for you with live music just coming back in general? Have you been going and doing as many shows as you were doing before the pandemic? Uh, I would definitely say I'm doing more shows than I was doing before the pandemic. Um, and that's probably because of the new music we've been dropping. But I've been trying to get like a little more social, social active on the um, social media a little bit too, man. That's that's played a part. And me just, you know, like I say, taking it a whole lot serious, more serious now, realizing that the, uh, the game don't need me. The game doesn't change what players do. And realizing that I need the game, so let me act like I need this shit, man. You feel me? I'm changing yeah. my own mindset, man. That's all. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And in other interviews, too, you've talked about your place in Atlanta hip-hop and your respect in Atlanta yeah, hip-hop. And so, you say you feel like you don't get the credit you deserve. No, no, I don't. I don't I don't think I get the credit I deserve, man. Uh, I don't. Uh, like I say, I feel like the sound, like the Atlanta sound, today, I feel like I should be one of those ones in that heavily influenced sound. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I wasn't vocal about it then, so I don't respect them, but... They know, like, we know, like, we know, and they know. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't mention the, the Atlanta sound today without mentioning corn. Corn, period. Period. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm, you know, I'm top three and I'm not three. And that's that, and that, that's that's what it's been. And I'm going to show I'm, I'm gonna show these people that. I'm going to show you. I'm going to let the music show you. It ain't just me saying it. I know what I got. I know what we've been working on. They're going to see why I'm top three and not three. So top three and not three. Who are the other two? I don't know. That's what the people just say. I just know <laughs> I'm not three because, like, I, but because it's really like a five and all. Like, I got like a yeah. good little five, and the five will be um no no order. Savage is up there, and it's just for today. It's not all time. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you got Savage up there. You got Future up there. You got Thug up there. Baby up there, and myself up there. And I'm just you know I'm top three and not three. That's for everybody else to put right. it in order. You know? Yeah. No, I hear that. And I mean, just hearing the names you think about, thinking about you and Thug, I mean, I feel like Lifestyle was one of the most influential songs of the past decade. For sure. For sure. Yeah. For sure. And, or Lifestyle and definitely the, the, uh, the Rich Game mixtape. The oh, Rich yeah. Game mixtape, as well as the Still Going In, and I promise I never stop going in, that influenced the sound. That influenced the sound, man, because that's when the differences came to uh, some type of ways. And, you no know, man, that run was crazy. That that decade did it definitely influence the sound to today. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, I mean, even just the way that you see that artists are trying to do multiple things on a track, whether they're trying to sing, they're trying to real, like, the, I feel like you, Thug, a lot of you were doing that early so you sure. combine that you combine with the frequency that people released in music the way a lot of these pop stars just you know trying to do different oh, things on the track, the releasing it all cadences, you know what i'm saying like yeah 
think I think we showed it like you ain't got to be a singer to the the hold the tone. And I think it, yeah. it made more people just want to go try like shit. Because I know I can't sing, but I can hold a decent tone where I can make you, I can I can trick your mind. And I think a lot of people want to try that. And that's, what you, that's why you hear it so much. It's an unorthodox sound. We ain't trying to sing, but it does sound good if we try to hold a tone. And you hear that in 80% of the music you hear on the radio today. And you wasn't hearing that then, 10 years ago. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, because I feel like the people that started to do this early, people would try to clown and be like, oh, what are you doing? Then it became exactly. cool. Now everyone started doing it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Sure. No, you see where the trend is for sure. But yeah, I mean, for you, I do know that, you know, even though you had that moment, there was a period where, you know, you weren't releasing music and there was... I know that in past interviews, you've talked about how it was a bit of a difficult time for you. What was it like for you to be able to come back from that? I know you talked a little bit about how the pandemic was an opportunity for you to reset things, but what was it like for you to really be able to come out of that and then still be in the place that you you are today? Oh, man. To come out of it, I think it was just like amazing. Took a whole lot of praying for one, um, um, stand down, and like I said, man, not wanting to give up, man, you know what I'm saying, knowing, like, I think I, I started something beautiful, and it's still so much, so many pages I've yet to get to, and I know I'm capable of getting to, I've yet to scratch the surface, and, like, me being such an asshole to myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, on days I would just make up, I would wake up mad just for no reason. And, like, the people around me didn't deserve it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm the leader. And a lot of times, like, man, I just know, like, I couldn't, I couldn't continue to live like that and call myself a child of God, man. You feel me? So once I yeah. got that cloud over my head, man, it felt, it, it felt amazing, man. But I had to take it a day at a time. Like it, I wouldn't be talking the way I'm talking now if I didn't get that cloud over my head. Like it was some tough, tough, tough nights. Like I think, like I said, I went a year without getting in the studio, and I've always kept me a studio like at my house, like a nice yo. I didn't, I didn't listen to the radio for three years. You know what I'm saying? But I'm still doing shows. Like I never stopped doing shows, but my my heart wasn't in it. My mind was there. But my heart wasn't in it. And I think, like, in this bitch, your heart got to be in anything. And I like for my shit to be genuine. And, you know what I'm saying? My heart just wasn't in it. So sitting, sitting back in this house for that year, um, reminiscing on a lot of things, a lot of memories, those good ones. Uh, and waking up one day, it's like, so this is how you going to end your story? And I myself telling myself, like, hell nah, man, you better than all these niggas. But in order to say that, you got to go put in the work to be able to show show that, and that's what it was, man. And I ain't got I ain't got out this room since. I do everything down here. I sleep down here. As you can see, I'm getting my hair braided down here. We play the game down. Here. The vibes down here. And if your energy out, don't even come down here, you know. And that's just what it been, man. And I imagine that some of that's that competitive nature too, right? You didn't yeah. listen to the radio for three years. You're focused, you're locked in, but you're still performing. But when you start listening to the radio again, I'm sure you're hearing what's popping off and you're like, no, I'm better than these dudes. Oh, uh, yeah, like, like no. when I'm hearing them, I'm like, oh, this what people going crazy about? Oh, no, we got to get, we got to go to work. We got to go to work. And it's like, and when I started going to work, like at first, I didn't, I felt like, um, cause I, I was so used to doing songs fast, like going crazy. And when I got back in there, like it wasn't like I just got back in there and was, it was, it was the corn I am today. Oh no, it took time. It might have took six months before I got back to playing my songs back in the car for my for the people around me. You know what I'm saying? So it's still, I had to gain my confidence back, man. I had to get it back, man. But I got it. Oh, I got it. I got it. Yeah. And I know, too, for you, I feel like there's a few things, because obviously it's you as an artist, like we're talking about, Quanda artist, building that up. You've got the confidence and you got the swag back with that. But I know that you've talked a lot about how 10 years from now, you want Quanda CEO to be doing more of the work and you don't necessarily want to be making music as much. Can you talk to me about what you see that 10 years from now looking like? 
uh, 10 years from now is a long time, and I try not to see that. Like, when I said that, because I try to make, like, real short-term goals that are real possible, but I do know, and, I like, 10 years from now, I'll be 43, and I probably should have said 12, because 45 sounds like a better number just to leave it alone at. Um, I won't be focusing on Quan the Artist. But as far as Quan the CEO, Quan the CEO may start writing more because I just love music that much and I still can never not see myself creating. So uh, I've been even look, dipping into it now, like more of writing more, writing more. But I will probably be uh, doing writing more, focusing on, because um, I've been trying, I've been doing modeling, modeling late, lately. Milan, when they do the fashion show, I'm walking the runway. It's the first time I did that. I had just did the fashion week. So I'm already How trying was that? to How did you like doing the runway for the fashion show? Uh, well, I, well, I haven't done that yet. I do, I do that next week. But just the okay. fashion show itself, just going to fashion week in New York. Oh, man. Amazing, man. Like, just being around people like, like oh, my God. Like, I was almost like, I didn't whip my phone up. But I was just like, hey, man, that's the boy for my show I like, you know what I'm saying? Just like, dog, saying seeing Cal Cool. No, seeing you, uh, you saying boat. Um, Amy, what's her name? Amy Why? Winnie, Winnie Harlow. Yeah, Winnie Harlow. Man, like just seeing her in person, just made and being like front row next door, next to talking to Corday. Like, dang, it just gets you in different rooms. I'm, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm seeing like, oh, I maybe could do this. I maybe could do this for the next twenty years after rap. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. So it's just like. Mm, you know, other stuff, even like being an author, I want to come out with a memoir. I'm ready to write my book. You know what I'm saying? Because I do want to get in the movies and I uh, want to come out with an autobiography movie one day. So not even me playing myself, but at least writing it. I'm trying to get in directing, trying to get in, you know, I see 10 years from now, I see myself that guy, man. Yeah. That guy. I feel like we're going to see you at the Met Gala next year or something. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. I'm gonna be at, uh, try to be at a whole lot more of them, man. A whole lot more of all this stuff that's clean. I just gotta let them know I do this shit too. Yeah, How the memoirs are good. Yeah, the memoirs are good. I mean, Gucci's was good. Ross's was good. I mean, there's so much, and I mean, you're obviously gonna be able to tell stuff that no one's told before. You're gonna have these. Man, I got stories like that. And I got stories that I know, like, I mean, I just don't give that I think that would be dope into a book. Like, from especially me being real, I think it would be more raw because I love to read. So I would definitely give more more details in my book. You know what I mean? I would definitely. Yeah. No, but it, it gets there. spicy. It gets spicy. Yeah. Have you done as much on TikTok lately? Just, you know, whether you are the you on camera, off camera, and, and uh, I know I'm, musicians I'm still... have a lot of opinions about it. Yeah, I'm I'm still adjusting. I'm still adjusting. I'm still adjusting. So now a lot of my TikTok just been like uh, like stuff from the music, but I'm starting. I, I'm I'm gonna start. I'm, I'm gonna get a little more personal. Show, show show the fans a different side of me because that's what I'm transitioning to now. Like I am a rapper, and that's what fans love. So I'm transitioning just to showing them a little bit of my, a little bit more of my personal side, and just decide deciding which side of my personal side I'm I'm willing to reveal. No, that makes sense. Because I want it that to be authentic. Sense. I don't just want to get on there because everybody's doing it. I know I want to have something different to offer and let you know it's authentic. You're getting a real me. Yeah. Like, I can't see you trying to do some, like, trick. Like, you know what I mean? Like, everyone's trying to do these visual tricks. Yeah, like, you no, know, yeah. yeah. No, no, never, 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 never. That, that, that goes against my morals and ethics, you know what I'm saying? Like, that, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. No, for sure, man. Well, no, man, I'm excited for you, man. I feel like this is a good chapter. I feel like whether it's the pandemic or other things, like these triggers that happen in life give us a good opportunity to just pause, reset, and come back stronger. And I feel like you got the infrastructure there to keep moving, man. So proud of you, excited for you for what's coming. But man, before we let you go, give us a heads up of what to look out for. What should we look out for the next couple of months coming from you? Uh, next couple of months coming from me, uh, we're in November. Yeah. Uh, shit. Some weeks after this, man, you can look for us to be reloading uh, the family and moolah. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to call it a, a deluxe. We're just going to reload it because I feel like the reloaded is a deluxe anyway. And I think like that's a trend I started years ago. So they, they, they say deluxe, but we reloading it with seven new songs. Wait, wait. So, so you started the deluxe train? Yes, I, 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 I'm not going to say that, but it was called Reload. No, God, I'm not going to say I started, but I think I did, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think I did. I think me and Thug was the first artist doing do, do 
like you know what I'm saying, the duo mixtapes. That they're, they're the name of the albums now. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a right. lot of stuff we were doing, you know what I'm saying? You know, history repeats itself. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So dope, man. We'll look out for that and we'll look out for the rest of the stuff coming from you, the team. Yeah, more videos. Yeah, yeah, more more videos, uh coin in your face a whole lot more. Um yeah, man, more RHQ to brand, uh, more uh, RHQ time Venice, and more of us going up, putting it in their face, man. I'm on the way. I want, we're here now. We're here now. We're here. Love it, man. I love it, man. Quan, it's been a pleasure, man. Thanks for joining. Thank you, man.